Hi guys, in this lecture, you are going to understand at 100% the concept of motion path. And if you don't, please ask all the questions you want to ask in the Q&A section of the course. It's an important concept and I will be very happy to help you understand the concept of motion path. And it's very easy, very simple. Don't worry about it. Just try to notice few things. Let's start. I'll create a new composition and I will take 1280 by 720. And please work with me. Make sure that the frame rate is 30. Okay. This is important because I'm going to talk about the frame rate. And then, of course, make it 10 seconds. It will do. Cool. So now that you have your composition, I want to remind you about a couple of settings. First, if you go to edit, if you are on the Mac, you are, I think, under After Effects CC, you go to Preferences, and here you go to General. Remember, there is a setting that you put here, Default Spatial Interpolation to Linear. Well, what does it mean? There are three keywords here, out of five, actually. Spatial, it means it is in space, not in time. It's in space, not in time. It is spatial, not temporal. Interpolation. It means the interpretation of the motion path or how it's going to occur. And linear, it means straight lines and not curved lines or circle lines. So spatial, space, interpretation, and linear. Make sure this default is checked. Click OK. Within your composition preview, it's important that you put toggle mask and shape path visibility on. Okay, so make sure it's on. If you can't see the motion path later on, try to put it on and off. And in the preview, please make sure that the last icon is checked. This will allow us to see the motion path when we have a preview. Let's create a motion through space and time. That is spatial and temporal. Nice terms, but they're going to appear in After Effects and you're going to use them. Let's take, for example, a circle. Okay, I'll click on the ellipse tool, click and drag and create a circle. Okay, so the anchor point jumped in the middle of the circle. If you don't have it, use the anchor point tool to bring it in the middle here. If you want to animate through time and space, you will need the position. Let's keyframe the position just over here. And then let's move down the time. I will move now in time. Notice I moved in time for one second. Then let's move in space. Here you are. So when you moved in time and you moved in space, a motion path has been created. As simple as this. Let's do it again. Let's move to two seconds. Here you are. So we moved in time and then we move in space. And another leg of the motion path has been created. Let's move again in time. And let's move again in space. So this is spatial. This is temporal. And a new motion path has been created or a new leg. Let's go to the final one at four and move again. Here you are. I stopped the animation at four seconds. If you scrub through now, your element or your shape is moving through time and through space. That's pretty cool. So this is how a motion path is created. Let's look at the special aspect of the motion path. First of all, you have these big squares here. One and two and three. Okay. These are the keyframes. Notice if I click on this one, it will highlight in the timeline. These are the keyframes. You can click in space and change the position, the spatial position of this keyframe. So you are changing how you are looking at the path or what will be the path itself. Nothing to do with time, just moving it around. Now, these small dots here are the frames. Remember, our composition was 30 frames per second. So here you have 30 dots. Why? Because we have one second between this keyframe and this keyframe. There must be 30 frames per second. Now, if you zoom in, I will use this bar here to zoom in and to show you frames per second. Here you are. So notice you can jump one frame at a time. Here you are. This is in time, temporal. I'm going one frame at a time. And you notice that also spatially, it's going one frame at a time. As simple as this. Okay. It, you can use page down to move down in the timeline and in the space, one frame at a time or page up. So this is the representation of the motion path, frames and keyframes. Let's do something else here. Let's zoom out. 
go back to normal. And let's take this keyframe, click on it, and move it. But I'm going to move it very near to this second keyframe. Notice nothing has happened in time. So I still have one second in between the first, second keyframe, and one second between the second keyframe and the third keyframe. But if you notice, the space in between the keyframes here is at least visible. And the space here is totally not visible. Which means, since it has to traverse all these frames in one second, it's going to go speedy. And all these frames in one second or so is going to be slow. Let's try it. If you don't believe me, here you are. This is the spatial visualization of the motion path. And you can come and draw it the way you would like. That will be very interesting to draw motion path very easily. You really don't have to harass to go to the keyframe. Let's look at the temporal aspect here. If I take this keyframe and drag it towards the next keyframe. Okay, that's what's going to happen in the motion path here. So obviously in the timeline here, I know that I have more time in between the first and the second than in between the second and the third one. And visually, I can see that, or especially if you like, there are more frames here and they are near to each other, meaning this animation is going to be somehow slow. Be careful, I could have 10 seconds, okay? But this one is surely very fast. Let's play. Okay, so actually, this is all about the motion path. You create it through movement in space and movement in time using, for example, the position. In the next lecture, we will see about interpolation.